Welcome to Somerset Success Strategies. Today's topic is Lessons from the Octagon. No, not the one from geometry class, but the one from the Ultimate Fighting Championships, or UFC. UFC is the sanctioning body for MMA, or Mixed Martial Arts. Mixed Martial Arts is an evolving combat sport that uses a combination of different styles of fighting, anything from jiu-jitsu to judo to karate, boxing, kickboxing, wrestling, uh, and others in a strategic and tactical way in a supervised type of competition. Now, I can't really explain why I'm drawn to MMA, but I think it has a lot to do with why I've been drawn to other intense sporting events over the years like bull riding, skiing, uh, bicycling, uh, uh, motorsports, because, it, and I believe it's because of the passion that those athletes bring to those activities. These athletes subject themselves to the possibility of massive personal injury or even death every time they come to play. Therefore, they have to be absolutely committed to and passionate about uh, and love the sport that they're engaging in. And you just don't seem to see the lackluster performances in these types of sports that you sometimes see in the um, uh, NBA or Major League Baseball. So what are my lessons from the octagon? Well, first of all, uh, stamina. One of the things that I've noticed is that the best conditioned athletes usually win. Number two, skill. The athletes with the best basic skills usually win. Number three is you've got to remain calm. The athletes that don't abandon their game plans usually win. Four, you've got to be able to play good offense. The most aggressive athletes usually win. And number five, you've got to play good defense. The most important strategy, strategy of all in the sport is to protect yourself at all times. So let's go back and work on these one by one. First of all, conditioning. Conditioning is just as important for corporate athletes as it is for MMA fighters. The team that has the best conditioned athletes is going to be able to create the, uh, the most sustain, sustainable success in the business world as well. Your corporate athletes need a healthy mixture of a combination of aerobic training, weight training, and mental conditioning in order to be able to work at their best, as opposed to just any one of those three individually. Now, how can they get this aerobic training? They can get from walking, biking, running, variety of different areas. Your corporate athletes can get strength training from weightlifting, Pilates, and the like, just to name a few. And of course, mental conditioning yeah, can be derived from yoga or any one of the martial arts. So if you don't want to leave your success to chance, you've got to create an environment where you really emphasize conditioning for your corporate athletes. You've got to make working out easy. You've got to provide access to the right equipment. You've got to provide financial incentives so your corporate athletes can afford to be fit and you've got to support fitness in your corporate culture. It needs to be perfectly acceptable to be at the gym versus strapped to your desk from dawn to dusk. In the long run, your well-conditioned corporate athletes will be more productive uh, even if they work fewer hours. Nike is a good example of a company that really stresses fitness in their overall corporate culture. They simply walk their talk of just do it. Now let's go on to number two, which is skill development. It should go without saying, but since common sense is not always very common, let me go ahead and stress the importance of basic skill development. No matter how good of a strategic plan you have, no matter how good your marketing is, you're not going to be able to build sustainable su success if you're not the best at the basic blocking and tackling of what you do organizationally. If you're an electrical contractor, you're going to have to have the best electricians as just the table stakes of being able to get in the game. Um, what we found is that the MMA fighters that uh, uh, are the ones that don't just talk a good game in the pregame interviews, they're the ones 
who actually have the best basic skills when it comes to jiu-jitsu, judo, wrestling, whatever the basic elements may be. So you can never overemphasize basic skill development. It all gets down to Tony Dungy's philosophy of simply doing the ordinary better than anybody else in doing it every day and in every way. So there's nothing really sexy about these basic business uh, building blocks of building a successful business. You just need to be able to predictably and reliably be the best at what you do. Now let's go on to the next element, which is remaining calm. The MMA fighters that consistently win are the ones that don't abandon their game plan the first time they get smacked in the face. Now this is an easy lesson to understand, but it is much more difficult to adhere to in the heat of the battle. It comes down to another Tony uh, Dungy success principle, which is as follows. Leaving your game plan is a sign of panic, and panic is not in your game plan. When the Chicago Bears ran back the opening kickoff in the Super Bowl for a touchdown, Tony didn't panic. He didn't alter his game plan. They stuck to their guns, they worked through the adversity, and came out as the Super Bowl champions. Now, it's normal and necessary to make adjust adjustments within the game and during a contest, but not to abandon your entire original game plan. If your carefully crafted game plan is not getting the results that you desire in a given uh, contest, what are the chances of a, um, a, a new game plan that you come up with just on the spur of the moment being successful? So stick with your well-crafted crafted game plan with minor adjustments during the contest. It's going to be the best hope that you have. Um, so what we find out in the corporate world is that you should not change your strategies or initiatives frequently like some type of a flavor of the month club. What you should do is spend the time and effort to build a solid strategic plan once every 12 to 24 months and then give it time to work with only minor tweaks along the way. So the next element is playing a good offense. Controlled aggression is an MMA fighter's best friend. The fighter that relentlessly pushes the pace in a controlled manner within their overall game plan usually wins. Now conditioning comes into play here as well, as you have to be in great physical and mental condition uh, to be able to push and control the pace of a, a fight that may be a five round, uh, five minutes per round fight for a championship fight. And our, the business world is the same way. It's a bit of a marathon, so you need, that's why you need to be in good condition. Now this uh, uh, ability to be, to have controlled aggression in the business world is often referred to as having a bias for action or speed. And it's one of the things that Jack Welch was always looking for in his management team. It also relates to a Tony Dungy principle, which is that he always stresses a sense of urgency that falls just short of a sense of panic. Now lastly and most importantly, number five is to play good defense. The last thing that a referee says to the MMA fighters before they begin the contest is to protect themselves at all times. You can get hurt very badly, very quickly in an MMA contest and end up being down for the count even though you may have been winning the fight up to that point. And the same thing can happen in the business world. At any point in time, you can get some kind of a, of, of a significant injury uh, out of left field in your business. And it's really just about playing good, solid defense. Tony Dungy has a, a basic core principle that he calls uh, don't give up big plays. Well, it's the same thing in business. We need to protect our existing customers from the attacks of our competitors by providing excellent customer service. We also need to retain the best and brightest of our team members by combining the right compensation and training and development systems. We need to play defense by protecting our intellectual capital through trademarks and copyrights. We need to protect ourselves through non-compete agreements and employment agreements. 
we need to play defense by having thoughtful risk management through comprehensive insurance coverages. Good defense includes such things like disaster recovery plans, firewalls, and defense would also include buy-sell agreements, succession plans, estate planning, and personal financial plans. Well, that's it for my lessons from the Octagon and how they apply to the business world. We'd really like to hear from you. What are your personal and business lessons from your favorite sports? We would love to hear from you. Thank you.